And before all of that, Shane Curran, good morning to you. Good morning, fellas. How are you? Good, 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 good. We've got 15 minutes with you and we have about an hour's worth of chat. So let's get straight into it. You followed you followed, and been reading about the events in Cork uh, overnight. What do you think? What do I think? I, I, look, I, it's, it's kind of rinse and repeat again, isn't it? Um, you know, it's, it's a new bridge of nowhere saga. Um, where I suppose official them has, has got got in the way of of the players, and and uh, the players have kind of just decided enough is enough, and um, have escalated the row uh, quite rightly so. Um, and I can see where they're coming from to 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 kind of keep the venue in a more intimate place like Parky Rain. And you know, look, I don't understand when 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 um, guys sit down uh, in the fixtures committee rooms and and come up with these things. Uh, how they're not going to, or think that they're not going to to uh, rile the players and, and rile the supporters. And we're going into the championship now, to, uh, talking about about fixtures and and uh, expenses instead of instead of football. Mm. Um, so the front pages are full of of stuff like that, and and even the back pages. And um, I can empathise and have serious empathy with with the Cork players, and I think they're they're one hundred percent correct here in, in their sense that they're taking on. And uh, look at the best thing with the likes of these things is. Okay, hold your hands up and say, "Look, at uh, we've messed up. Uh, the fixture is going to be in Parky Ring, and then it just it takes away all that that ambiguity about about uh, about where it's going to be or where it's not going to be." And uh, in, in the context of the debt of the debt chain, like it's it's twenty million conservative estimate. Tom Ryan was talking last year about thirty one and a half million in the Cork Stadium and the the Cork GA debt that sits there. It's not of the players making clearly, but is it is it? Uh, you're clearly feeling that it's entirely fine for them to be detached from that and to say, "Listen, we, you know, there's there is extra money to be made by bringing this game to Killarney, but that's not our business. Play this game in Parky Rin and and be be damned otherwise." Yeah, and I think I think the debt and the debt of the football can't be can't be ran ran in parallel. Even though I suppose look at the that the debt is going to have to be paid back over some some. Uh, some period of time, uh, moving the game to Killarney um, is not going to fix that debt uh, or any other game either. And, and the argument could be made that probably you, you might actually have more people in Parky Rin in a more intimate venue than you would have in the vast, vast uh, venue that is is Killarney. And uh, certainly, I think the way Cork football is at the moment, um, Parky Rin is probably more than more than big enough to hold the crowd. Um, and Killarney, I think I don't think you get any atmosphere there at all. Uh, the debt that Munster and Cork have um, is, is a completely separate issue, and they'll find a way of paying that back. Same as same as uh, all debts are paid back over time, and um, that I think think is a, a spurious argument to kind of to uh, to leave that on the backs of the players. To be fair, I think I think it's it's a separate a separate entity altogether. Yeah, and I think um, uh, there'll be. be down in Roscommon, you're not as you're not too worried about all that sort of stuff. There's plenty of uh, excitement about what's going on. Unbeaten in the league, first league win over Galway uh, last weekend, nearly 20 years. Is there a giddy excitement in Roscommon? Um, yeah, there, there, there is, and, and look at uh, it's off the back. Really, I think of of little or probably no expectation really this year of of. Um, of of uh, the, the team doing really that well, I think, you know, leading into the league, um, you know there was a, a management kind of step down. There was a lot of of uh, talk about maybe Cunningham not staying on in his position, um, but they have regrouped, and you have to give credit to the players and to the management uh, for for the performances um, throughout the league. Not notwithstanding, I think the paucity of the opposition in Division Two and the quality of the teams in it, um, Roscommon and Galway have stood out as as the two best uh, as the two best in the group. And uh, in Roscommon's particular case, uh, they've played really good football against against the likes of Cork, uh, certainly against Mead. Um, probably their poorest performances have come at home against Clare and Clare and and Derry. Uh, and last week against Galway, they were they were excellent. Um, notwithstanding that Galway probably weren't at full tilt and have have different priorities, but. Um, it's signs are good for us, Common. And um, you know, as I said, the management of players have to take great credit for that for regrouping. Um, when when the levels of expectation would have been quite low, they've they've elevated their levels of expectation to to another another level, which is which is good. And um, I have to say, you know, um, 
my old club man uh, and two club men, uh, Eddie Nolan and Brian Stack, have been to the fore in, in the Renaissance this year. And uh, it's also great to see, I think, Fulton Harney um, in midfield with Eddie Nolan, giving Roscommon a really strong foundation um, for, for developing their attacks into a forward line that, to be fair, is, is, is very... Uh, on its day as good as any is probably in the country with the Murtas and, and uh, all the other lads that are around them, the Smiths and Coxes and Heenhans now that are coming in and others. So um, it's great to see Ultron back. Um, you know, he's gone through three, four, five years of really difficult time with injuries. Um, probably Libra was brought into the fold too young um, and his body didn't mature along, along the lines required for inter-county football. But he's been he's been really terrific in the league. He's played five or six games now, I think, for the first time in his career at this level. And uh, as I said, um, his partnership with Eddie Nolan in the middle of the field with Brian Stack at full back. Uh, added to that, the Porrick Pierce's players coming back have given us common uh, a really really good strong spine for league football. Um, I hasten to add, I think uh, there will be different challenges when it comes to um, the championship. But for now. Um, yeah, I think it's it's been a very, very good league season. Does it give Ross Common a lift, putting it bluntly, to see Galway and Mayo drawn against each other in a kind of championship draw? Well, look, these these are the, the I suppose, the long, boring, boring arguments around the championship draws. I think over the last five or six years, we have been quite fortunate to probably be on the on the weaker side, let's, let's call it what it is, it, uh, the Sligo Leitrim side. I think in 2019, we had a ter- terrific championship by beating Galway and Mayo. But prior to that and, and, and post that, we've struggled uh, in the knockout games against Mayo in the last couple of years and Galway. Um, in the in the COVID times, but maybe the fact that we're out of COVID now, and we can get a little bit more fluidity uh, to our to our practice and to the games. Uh, they might hopefully develop and 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 be better. Um, notwithstanding that we've lost a lot of players as well, who are very experienced and very young. But I think that's the nature of, of the game. Now we see a lot of players um, moving away from the game for one reason or another um, from all the counties, not just not just for Scotland. So. Um, I think, yeah, it's 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 given everyone a lift going into the championship, uh, and the fact that it most likely will be Sligo, um, it won't be an easy game, but it's one that you would expect Roscommon to win, um, and then you've either Galway or Mayo who will who will have one one or either either will be out of the championship at that at that case in time. Anthony Cunningham was talking after the Galway game about like how it was a backs to the wall, a game that Roscommon had to win. That. Um... Obviously, you've caveated already that it wasn't a first pick Galway team, but having that pressure, Shane, and then delivering on it, how big of a momentum shifter can that be for us, Common? Oh, they're huge. It can be very, it can be very significant, irrespective of all the the the, um, the quality of the opposition at the, on the given day. Um, wins that over your Galways and Mayo's uh, do elevate, particularly if you're a young team. They, they give a team a sense of a sense of being and a sense of achievement, and. Uh, you know, being in a league final is uh, a Division Two league final is no small feat for this Roscommon team. As I said and alluded to, um, many, including myself, would have been happy for them to stay in Division Two for a couple of years and develop at that level. And they now find themselves back in Division One, and um, back in Division One and in the league final against Galway again on Sunday. And I think that can only be good. Uh, for the team and for the county and for the supporters and and uh, certainly I think you know even the type of football they're playing is a bit better than um, maybe the last couple of years as well but you know I caution as well um, that league football and particularly the league this year I think a lot of teams will have been planning uh, for a championship probably quite earlier on and maybe the likes of Cork aren't as bad as or be aren't as bad as they looked in the, league, the early stages of the league and certainly towards the back end, they seem to be getting maybe players back and, and a bit fitter. Um, you wonder really what is going on in both those counties um, when, when, when they look to be very out of sorts earlier on in the league. But the preparations maybe are, are different for different counties and um, you can only dance with the girls in the hall, as I say, and, and Roscommon danced very successfully with them. And um, again, as I said, looking forward to the game Sunday. The two counties will have will have competing competing priorities. Um, Galway will be having one eye, I think, on the Mayo game in in three weeks' time. Roscommon uh, will look at this as an opportunity to put a bit of silverware on the cupboard and uh, continue that growth uh, element of their of their game. What do you do with Shane Walsh? A nice easy one. Yeah, 
Yeah, look, at it. I suppose if there's one area that, that Roscommon have struggled in um, over the last number of years, it is defensively. Um, but we're, we're very fortunate. We've one of the best young footballers probably in the country in Brian Stack um, as a defender. And I, I would imagine that Brian will probably end up picking him up. Um, certainly when he comes into the danger areas, it depends on the sort of team that, that God we do pick. He's, 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 he's played or picked on in Mark and every, every sharpshooter that has uh, that every other team has and, and really hasn't given them a sniff of it throughout the league. And um, I would expect that will continue on, on Sunday should Shane Walsh play. Um, again, I'm not too sure whether he will or not. Uh, really? You think that's like Galway, but that would suggest that they're... He, I mean, it's a big league final, but they're keeping him uh, the powder dry a bit. Are you thinking? I, I think so. I think that they'll be looking to. It's 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 a, it's a different. It's a difficult conundrum for Porrick and his management team because confidence is, is is a big thing, and certainly building that up inside three to four weeks of a championship match, you don't want to be coming off the back of two defeats to a to a rival. That mm. being said, one of the defeats was probably a, a, a give up game, but a, a final is a final, and. Um, Teams will want to win those finals to actually build momentum and build confidence. And even, I think, maybe for, for the, the, last, the, the latter stages of the championship, if you meet, uh, you don't want to be probably playing a team that you've been beaten twice to either. And uh, that's a conundrum for Galway to get over. Do they pick a strong team to, to compete and maybe beat Roscommon with their best players and looking forward to Mayo in three weeks' time? Or do they build those players up that are coming back from injury uh, through through practice routines and in-house games, so um, these are difficult difficult times. I think for Galway, maybe in that respect, will they be that worried about? It? I'm not too sure, uh, but for Roscommon, certainly, and um, the opportunity to put um, silverware on the on the mantelpiece um, is is a great opportunity. Uh, Shane, I don't think we've had you on uh, during the, the league so far this year, and I appreciate this is probably a conversation that was raging dr- during February in the early throws of the league, but. How do you react when you see the, the the slew of goalkeepers that we've seen making marauding runs out out, out the field and and I guess um, managers in particular Kieran McGinney trying outfield players in goals and and the experimentation that we've seen over the last two months when it comes to to the goalkeeper role? I'm just keen to get your your take on that. Yeah, look, at it, I think um, there's a, there's a, there's obviously uh, conversations now around um, the hybrid goalkeeper and the the, the merits of of. Um, playing such a player in, in the position. Um, I've, I've spoken, I think, maybe not on this show, but on others, um, that it's a risk and reward for many managements and there will be lots of questions and queries that come up through the league, league um, campaign for many teams, um, and particularly probably the top four to six teams, uh, about what is the best, best tactical ploy with your goalkeeper um, in terms of how they play in the championship. I think if you if you roll the clock back to last year, me uh, Tyrone got a, a very significant beaten down in Kerry, where they conceded five or six goals, and and um, Niall Morgan was heavily criticised for for his performance down there in terms of coming out from goal and and getting caught in possession. But they managed to tweak that round um, and and find and facilitate the goalkeeper and guide the goalkeeper and support the goalkeeper through that phase um, for him to, to make better decisions and have better performances uh, throughout the championship and probably um, tailor his game a little bit more nuancedly towards championship football. Things you get away in the league, in, within the league, you won't get away in, cha- in championship. The game is much faster, it's much more competitive and it's much more combative as well. Um, so goalkeepers coming out are going to have a really have to have a really, really strong skill set. And um, teams are going to have to then decide are we going to play this way and risk conceding two or three goals and risk the confidence of the team and the mentality of the team and the goalkeeper being compromised or decide, well, yeah, we're going to go with a hybrid goalkeeper and try to develop a football style around that. There's a lot of questions. Is Can that be successful? In my opinion, it can't be and won't be. I think you have to have a goalkeeper who's technically competent um, but can, can play to a certain extent. And... Look, the position has gone to such an extent now that we're asking goalkeepers to do a myriad of things that in many cases are, are, are impossible. It's go short, it's go long, it's go around the corner, it's catch high balls, it's make saves, it's come out the ball, it's set up attacks, it's keep defence right, it's communication. So there's so many elements to it um, that the goalkeepers who are in goal now aren't technically attuned to all of them. 
most of them in the hybrid in the hybrid state are are outfield players playing in a technical position uh, without having the technical background and skill sets to to be able to to um, play there as as an out and out goalkeeper. And if you actually look at the top four, Kerry, Mayo, Tyrone, and and Dublin. There are question marks about the three goal about the three sets of goalkeepers in the in three of those teams, and the only one really that has a settled goalkeeper at the moment, um, for different reasons, is Tyrone Mayo. Rob Henley is is um, injured. The two Shane's and Kerry have been alternating their, their position. Similar in Dublin, and and the issue in Dublin you have is probably Evan Comerford um, replacing an icon like like Stephen Cluxton. As a young goalkeeper, you're going to go through certain periods where um, you need help and support on the the physical and mental side of the game, and um, when mistakes happen, because you're compared to somebody like like Juxton, and uh, the management will probably struggle to support the goalkeepers in many ways because part of management and and coaching hasn't kept up with the. Um, the change in in the style of goalkeeper that's been been uh, asked to play in the game. It's a if that makes sense. It does, and it's a conversation we're definitely going to come back to a lot over the next little while. And the reason that we said we needed to wrap with you because I know you need to get on the road, and there was a couple of things uh, that maybe tie in together. Shane, you'll be putting some of your sports performance and exercise psychology uh, course into play on the sidelines in Tipperary Town today. Well, the lads in Satanta have been have been very good to me so far. Uh, going back to learn is a, it's kind of a bit asked about face really. You know, at fifty years of age, I didn't do the learning when I, when I should have had. Now I'm back back at it uh, with good Satanta man. College, but really really enjoying it. And uh, yeah, the the um, the Bower are playing in the, the All Ireland uh, uh, School Final this afternoon in Tipperary Town at half past twelve. So I'm down around Tipperary. They want to. to, to Clip into a good uh, ladies game. The Bower playing Clan of in a, in a, uh, the school's final down there today. So yes, looking forward to that. And uh, look at I suppose um, yeah, we'll have many more conversations throughout the summer. Uh, I'm looking forward to a really good championship summer and looking forward to the league final this weekend. And uh, hopefully, it's football we'll be talking about, not not expenses and ground sharing and and uh, the like fixtures and so on. It wouldn't be the summer without it, uh, Shane. I see Abby Curran down as captain as well, and uh, and I see Kate Stewart trainer as well in the jeans. Uh, and both of those lineages are, are, are very good so no doubt uh, you'll go well this afternoon so good luck with it thanks very, thanks very much indeed thank good you very much guys Travin. much appreciate it Cheers, Thanks. Shane Curran on the line there uh, with his uh, reaction, obviously, to events in Cork and uh, a 